Oh, welcome back, fellow biologists. Justin here. I just baked myself some cookies. I'd share some with you, but, uh, you know, so. Mmm. That's some good cookie. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Oh, oh no, I messed up. I messed this up so bad. Ugh. Maybe I got my measurements wrong? Yeah, I, I didn't have any of the right measuring tools, so I had to do a bunch of weird conversions. Did you know that there are three teaspoons in a tablespoon and 16 tablespoons in a cup? It's like I had to do calculus just to bake some cookies. Ugh. I wish there was some system that made converting between different units of measurement so much easier. Oh wait, there is. It's called the metric system, and biologists all over the world use it to measure all kinds of data. Today, we're gonna to be exploring the metric system as we describe the difference between quantitative and qualitative data, explain the significance of using the metric system, and use the metric system to measure mass, length, and volume. Let's get into it. Data is any information that is collected and analyzed. People, including me and you, use and collect data all the time for all sorts of different reasons. For example, you might look at the sky to assess what the weather is like, or you might use a fitness tracker to measure your daily physical activity levels. There are two main types of data, quantitative and qualitative. Qualitative data is data that cannot be measured in numbers. Instead, it's descriptive data that describes the qualities or characteristics of something. Uh, some examples of this would be the sound of a howler monkey, the color of a toucan's beak, or the texture of a shark's skin. Can you think of some other examples of qualitative data? Pause the video here to jot down your ideas in your guided notes. So, what'd you come up with? Now, we also have quantitative data. Quantitative data is data that can be measured in numbers. It's either measured or counted. Some examples of quantitative data would be the number of spots on a butterfly's wings, the temperature of a rainforest, or the height of a redwood tree. I'm sure you could think of some more examples of quantitative data. Pause the video here and jot down your thoughts in your guided notes. Whenever we collect quantitative data in science, we always use the metric system. It's used globally, and it's based on the power of 10. In the metric system, we use grams to measure mass, meters to measure length, and liters to measure volume. These base units tell us what we're measuring, and from there, we can use specific prefixes based on the power of 10 to express larger or smaller values. For example, kilo means 1,000, so one kilogram is 1,000 grams. Centi means one out of 100, so a centimeter is one one-hundredth of a meter. You can also think of this as a centimeter being 100 times smaller than a meter, or that there are 100 centimeters in one meter. Milli means one out of 1,000. So a milliliter is one one thousandth of a liter. All these prefixes can be used with any unit, making the metric system very flexible. Plus, because all the prefixes are just based on powers of 10, it's super easy to convert between different units. We don't have to use all these crazy different conversion rates like I did when I had to bake those cookies. Finally, because all scientists use it, 
it makes it much easier for scientists to share their results with each other. All right, now that we know the benefits of the metric system and we understand it a little better, let's discuss how to use it. First up, mass. Mass is the amount of matter or stuff in an object. Scientists measure mass by a tool called a balance. There's lots of different kinds of balances, but by far the easiest one to use is a digital balance. When measuring mass, as with any measurement, pay close attention to the unit of measurement, which will be displayed on the balance. Lighter objects, like leaves or almonds, are typically measured using grams, with a typical leaf weighing in at 1 to 5 grams. Heavier objects, like a person or even an elephant, are measured in kilograms. Keep in mind other prefixes may be used to measure other objects, such as things that are really, really large, like planets, or things that are really, really small, like bacteria. Next up is length. You're probably already familiar with measuring length, but I guess you're more comfortable measuring it with feet and inches rather than the metric system. As a reference, keep in mind that there are about 30 centimeters in a foot. Centimeters are ideal for measuring smaller to medium-sized objects, like the length of a maple leaf or the height of a person. A meter is a little over three feet, similar to a yard. Meters are ideal for measuring larger things like the height of a tree or the length of a whale. Finally, a kilometer is a little over half of a mile. That's what we use for the really big distances, like the length of a river or the migration paths of animals traveling across continents. Now we're ready to discuss volume. Volume is how much space something takes up. If your object has a simple shape, like a cube, you can simply multiply the length by the width by the height to find the volume. A cube with a side length of one centimeter would have a volume of one by one by one centimeter, or one cubic centimeter. However, what if we want to measure the volume of a liquid? Well, for that, we would use a graduated cylinder, beaker, or measuring cup. If you bake or cook at home, you're probably pretty familiar with this. Simply pour the liquid into your measuring cup and make sure your eyes are level with the top of the liquid. Then, read the bottom of the curved line, or the meniscus, shown here, making sure to note the unit of measurement. It's also important to keep in mind that whenever you're measuring data, your measuring tools might not always measure your results perfectly. Sometimes measurements will fall in between measurement lines. In this case, we make our best guess. This leaf's length is closer to 7.6 centimeters than 7.5 centimeters, so I'm going to say that this leaf is about 7.58 centimeters long. If my ruler instead looked like this, I'd have to round my guess to 7.6, which isn't as accurate. Accuracy refers to how correct our measurement is. We can always improve our accuracy by using the best available tools for our measurements and by measuring extremely carefully. Without accurate measurements, our investigations just aren't that useful. So whenever your investigation calls for some measurements, plan ahead. What's the best tool for the job? Use qualitative measurements whenever you're dealing with descriptive characteristics or qualities like appearance or sound and use quantitative measurements whenever you're dealing with numbers. And of course, if you plan on sharing your results with fellow scientists, always use the metric system to measure your results. In our next lesson, we're going to learn about how biologists organize and analyze their results. Until then, I'm Justin, and remember, life is full of wonders. So keep learning, and don't ever stop wondering. Hey.